Now, copy text. So let me run this query. And I've produced, let's turn off bookmark, we don't need that anymore. And I've produced a whole series of values. I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to put this back to bar mode. And I'm going to paste in my results here. Control R to get rid of the bottom of the screen. Now what I want to do is I want to turn this into a select count star in the minimum number of moves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up select count star from in that space. I'm going to do a control C. I'm going to put my cursor here and then I'm just going to go down to there. Control V and I've just put that onto every single column. Similarly, we want to put a dot in, so control C, put the cursor there, go and put that in there. Isn't that simple? All I'm doing is shift alt to copy and paste it in there. Now if we want to put a go at the end of these lines, so we have a go in between each line. If I do a control F to get up the find, I'm going to use my regular expressions. So I'm going to look for slash R slash N, which is highlighted, which basically is the end of line character. And I'm going to replace that end of line character with go and another blank line. So if I put my cursor here, go and find me. Just go and find the next one, and then we can go replace. Replace, 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 replace. No carriage returns, and we can just work all our way down. The Shift Alt to do column copies and column pastes. Definitely worth having a look at if you've never come across that. Works really, really, really well. So let's just finish a few more of them. Right, let's go back up to the top. Now, let me just copy a few things into the paste buffer. So let me go Control C, Control C, Control C, Control C. Control C, Control C. So I've just copied those five things into the paste buffer. And now you think, wouldn't it be really good if I could paste all of those somewhere else? If I come up here, let's just get rid of this fine so we get rid of the yellow brackets. And I go Control Shift V. There's my shopping cart. There's my customer clear. There's my sales history. There's my so that was territory, credit card, and tax rate. That's the one I was after. Management Studio has something called the clipboard ring, and it will hold the last 20 items that you copied into your clipboard. So you can just go Control Shift V and continually cycle around and find the ones you want. It will not hold anything from other programs that's only what's in Management Studio. But the clipboard ring is definitely very useful. Now I wonder how many of you have accidentally copied nothing by mistake and then gone to paste and find you've um, lost what you wanted to copy. Well Microsoft have come up with a solution. If we go to Tools, Options, Text Editor, All Languages in General, we have an option here Apply cut and copy commands to blank lines when there is no selection. If we turn that off, then no longer will you be able to copy blank lines. It, will, it just won't do anything. So if you're often managing to copy blank lines by mistake, maybe this is one for you. Though the clipboard ring, you won't lose your items anyway. Debugging. If you're a C-sharp developer using Visual Studio, you've all done debugging. We can do debugging in SQL Server Management Studio as well. Here is a nice little query. I'm going to put a breakpoint just by clicking in this column, and we'll put a breakpoint on there. I can then click the debug button, and the code will start running, running in debug mode. Here we go. I get a nice little debug menu. So F11 I tend to find a lot easier than clicking up here. What we can also do is we can pick up our variables and simply drag them down here. 
you'll see that I've already done it previously. And then as we click through, we can see that it will start filling in the values for us. And then we can loop, follow the code, and it will write and run as necessary the code for us. And that will run out, and we can see the values every time they change, the color goes red. And that works quite happily until it drops back out to where we were. And we still get the results. If you do use this, please note that if you call a system store procedure, it will start stepping through the system stored procedure as well. I'm going to change this max limit to 10. I'm going to put a debug statement on here. And what I want to do on this debug statement is I want to change the properties. Sorry, if I click on here, I want to put a condition on it. But if you notice, is the condition going to, it likes to disappear. There seems to be a bug in the debugger, which means the condition keeps disappearing. But if we go to the debug menu, go to Windows and go to Breakpoints, we'll get a new menu. So what I can do here is click on the debug point I want, right click and go to settings and I'll get exactly the same screen but now I can click on conditions and it doesn't disappear and now I can say at count equals 5 click OK and now when we run this code let's turn off that one click on the debugger set the code running it will now go around there da 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 and it stops when count equals five. So therefore we can put debugs into our code, just like you can in um, C Sharp. If you're not a C Sharp developer or a Visual Studio developer, you may have not seen this. And we can now stop that and we can check all the values and see maybe why our code isn't running. So the debugger is in here, very, very handy if you've got a lot of coding, if you're a developer and you're doing a lot of coding. I'm sure we've all written basic select statements and other code simply by typing in text onto the screen. Typing in code is one way to create a query, but did you know that we can also drag items out of the object explorer onto the query window? Let me show you. If I type in use space highlight AdventureWorks, I can drag it into the window. Hit go. I can also say select star from and then drag the table name out and place it on the screen as well. I can then hit execute and that will work quite happily. If we want to, we could take the star out. I could come down to the columns and simply drag up and put address line one, comma, address line two. We can drag just about any item from Object Explorer into the query window, which might be a much quicker way for you to be able to write your queries than having to write everything out. As well as being able to drag and drop items onto the screen, we can also use IntelliSense when we need to. So let me come down here. If I type in use followed by A, Management Studio will list all the databases for me because it knows it's looking at the A, and then I can select the one that I want from the list. One thing that doesn't seem to work is if I wanted to write a select statement, if I say select, it will not offer me the names of all the tables, of all the columns of the table that I want to select from, because obviously IntelliSense doesn't know which table I am trying to select from. So what I can do, let me just drag person address from there, come back to my select, put in my from statement, come back over here, hit space, type in A, it will now give me the list of the columns in my table. So I can now select address line one, comma, and I can type in C to get to city, and I can build them up that way. So IntelliSense is very handy for being able to type in if you prefer typing to dragging and dropping. Some of the other useful features with IntelliSense is if you hover over a particular item, it will tell you what that item is. So here it's telling me that address line one is a column. 
types of an NVAR char and it's not null. Similarly, I can hover over address and it will tell me that's the table AdventureWorks 2016ctp3.person.address. So it can be very handy for telling you what the properties are of the object that you're using. Obviously, if we make a mistake in our code, so if I say where city likes um, and then make a mistake in my code, you'll see that it's underlined with squiggly brackets because it doesn't understand it. It doesn't always tell you exactly where the fault is, but if I was to now take out the like, it will now correct itself. So IntelliSense is being very, very handy. So let me try a new statement. So if I say select substring open bracket, it will now tell me what I need to be typing in. So I can then say the expression that I'm looking for. So maybe at, at server name, comma, even highlights that I now need to put in the starting position. So I could say one, comma. It's now telling me how many characters do I want to turn. So I'm going to say five return and even tells me it's going to be a string. So you can use IntelliSense very easily so you can check that your code that you're typing in is exactly what you need. If you're like me and you know several different computer languages, this sort of thing can be very handy because you'll find some commands within T-SQL, the parameters are specified in a different order to those say in C Sharp or Visual Basic. So being able to see using IntelliSense that there is a difference is very, very handy. Now let me type in a new command. So create database db5. If I run that statement, and it will create me a new database called db5. Now if I go use db5, you'll see that it's not on the list at the moment. So therefore, Management Studio is underlining it with a wiggly, squiggly red line, which is obviously wrong because I've just created it. And this can be a really annoying thing if you're creating new objects and IntelliSense isn't aware that that object has been created. So what we can do is we can come up to Edit, go to Incelli's Tense, and we can say Refresh Local Cache, or if you prefer the keyboard character, Control-Shift-R. And when I do that, Management Studio will go and check on new objects. And if we give it a moment, it now has got rid of the red squiggly line and I can now use the use db5 command. So if you're getting red squiggly lines telling you there's a syntax error, then it is worth just refreshing your local cache in IntelliSense and hopefully then that will fix the issue. Now I'm sure like me, you have numerous SQL instances that you need to be managing and trying to remember the name of all those instances and which projects they go with can be quite difficult. So Microsoft has helped us here by creating an option called Registered Servers. And here we can create different groups. So I have two groups, one called Azure and one called Local. In my Azure list, I have some of my Azure SQL servers. And in my Local list, I have my two local instances. And then I can simply Double click on the instance I want and it will log me in to that instance. What's also nice about this is that if I right click and go to properties, I can also choose things like custom colors. So for my management studio 2017, I'm going to choose red. I can then save that. And then when I right click on new query, I now get a query with a red bar at the bottom. So maybe you could color code all your production servers with red so that you can see very quickly this is a production server and therefore be a bit more careful on the queries that you are running. One of the other nice features with registered servers is if I click on the actual group name, right click and say new query, you will see now that the color has gone pink and it's actually saying connect to two of two. Now let me paste in a query and if I run this query against that it will return and show two separate results. We can see that the server name that the query was run on and also the login name that I've 
run the query on as well as the results. So you can use this to run queries against multiple databases in one go. Now if I right click and go to query options and come down to the multi-server option we can choose whether to include the login name whether to include the server name in the results and whether to merge the results or not. So if I click on merge again, click OK, rerun the query, we now get it coming back as one query. In this case, I've just listed the server and the results. So this is a great way of being able to run code, maybe admin tasks against multiple servers in one go. Now this particular option, the registered server option, is local to your management studio, so it's just for you. There is an option called central management server, and if you use this, it will create exactly the same type of structure as this, but on a, on a centrally managed server so that all users can connect to that list and use that list to connect to different servers. So the central management server may be a good option for all your DBAs to use if you want to have a central list of all the servers grouped by project or by production or UAT. But be very careful with this because if you were to run a query such as this against every single server in your group then you could be out of work by the end of the day. So if you're thinking of using registered servers either as a local group within your management studio or as a central management server that all your team can use, please think very carefully about how you're going to control people running rogue queries against a lot of databases or lots of instances in one go. If you're not going to use registered servers, you can still color code your queries. So if I click on a new query and then come back up to change connection and go to options, I can choose different colors here. So if I was to connect to my 2016 server, I could choose a color without needing to use, without having to use the registered servers list. So we can do it that way. So you don't have to use registered servers to get color coded query windows, but definitely something worth considering if you want to make sure that you can identify queries running on different servers very easily. Obviously you can still come up here and hover over the tab to see where you're connected but I think color coding is a much quicker way of checking which instance you're running against.